So welcome to our first artist talk. It's Sunday afternoon, a little bit rainy out there, but that's okay. My name is Carol Ferguson. I'm the executive director of the Gabriola Arts Council, and I'm pleased to introduce you to the Kasahara Trust artist in residence, Michelle Provol from Gatineau, Quebec. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, during the four months she has been on Gabriola. So we decided, like with everything, why not Zoom it? So here we are today. And this will be the inspiration for future artist talks. So if you're interested in giving an artist talk, please let me know. So Michelle, I would like to start with, what are your impressions of Gabriola Island? Loving it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, an easy reply, but uh, I think I love everything about this uh, uh, work-wise and otherwise, because it's been, even with COVID uh, amplifying this, it's been very conducive to work. I should have started by apologizing in advance because there's like the double jeopardy of the accent and the mask on top of it. So I, I hope that's okay that you can uh, hear me okay. and. Uh, Yes, so this has been a treat, uh, nature-wise, time-wise, work-wise. Uh, only thing missing was people. Yes, <laughs> it's unfortunate for you and unfortunate for our artists on the island that they weren't able to interact with you and, and speak with you while you were doing your work. I know you had some emails back and forth and messages, so, so that was good. Um, but we hope that uh, you'll come back one day and be able to, to meet with artists. So, so yeah. yes, so do you. Um, talking about the, the Katsahara Trust, um, what drew you to the trust when you saw the notice? Um, it was a combination of location, of course. I mean, I'll be honest about that. I'm a nature person. Uh, the kayaking possibilities, uh, everything about that was appealing. The length of the residency, which is like uh, nice, uh, reasonable. Uh, it, it seems very long, but that's what it takes to uh, put a project through at the very least. And longer than that is too much of an interruption with your normal life. So uh, I thought I could uh, manage that. Plus, I had this project in the back of my head for some time, which is how I operate normally. I, I will let it simmer, do a lot of research, consider what can be done, uh, redirect my approach. And then I was kind of looking for a good home, uh, something that would give me the go ahead to do the, the project. Not so much in exhibition terms, but in like the opportunity to just concentrate on this. And uh, I thought that this was a perfect fit, really. Excellent. Well, you have quite a history with residences. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Because that was one of the things that impressed the panel mm -hmm. was your experience in doing this. Um, yes, I know that the person will be uh, comfortable in such a setting and actually uh, try on it and, and do the work. So this is a, a good reference. Uh, most of the residencies I've done so far are with the Quebec government, uh, Ministry of Culture, uh, Conseil des Arrières. They have uh, this uh, amazing uh, program for residencies and uh, they send you normally to a place which is attached to an arts centre, some institution, or, and it's more or less about this uh, length of time. And uh, I like to do sometimes, if this works out, a project that is specific to the place where I'm going. Uh, in this case, uh, this was different. Actually, I shouldn't say that. It's my ignorance that makes me say this because I, uh, we haven't said that, but my project was about aging and uh, the perception of uh, aging in our society. And uh, when I applied for this, I thought of, all the other circumstances. I was quite interested that this was a very art-related, oriented place. And what totally escaped me is the demographics. Like uh, I intended, as you will know, when I applied to consult the people more, have discussions, include that in the work, which unfortunately didn't happen so much. But I, had I spotted that, it, I would have wanted just here, you know, it, it would have been the, the perfect breeding ground for uh, 
Absolutely. for my project. So I missed out on that, made up for it in other ways, but uh, yeah. A time in Italy, is that true? Yes, I, I go there regularly, and uh, unfortunately the past two years, the past one because of COVID, uh, I couldn't go, and the year before it was a conflict and uh, too many uh, <laughs> activities, but uh, I, I lived there for a year and fell in love with Sardinia, uh, and then uh, I've met, I, I wasn't going there for my work, it was for my husband's work, who's a research scientist, and uh, he has been working uh, all his career with a colleague who's from there. And uh, so we went there for a year, and I met some artists there, and some curators, and I started, uh, when I was there for that year, I was actually doing work that had been commissioned, like that I would be showing when I got back home. And then I started going the other way around. I would uh, also do work here that I would exhibit. So I go back, I have access to a place, it's not like a formal residency, but uh, it's a flat that people don't use in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, they're only interested in summer and the spring is quite fantastic. So uh, every year I get to go for a month or two and then uh, present some work there. And it's a completely different world. Uh, on all levels, uh, art speaking. I mean, mm -hmm. very, very different. So, uh, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So we've talked a little bit about where you do your art. Let's talk more about what you do with your art. I mean, if people have had a chance um, to review your website, mm -hmm. uh, it was, it's quite a, a variety of, of things that you, you involve yourself in. So I noticed that you have, you're drawn to text text is really big for you. Do you want to yes. talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, um, I started late. I was 43 when I started uh, in art, actually 38 when I went to art school, started art school. And uh, it wasn't like uh, quite often people who do that. It was on the back burner. They went and had another career. And I was completely, completely ignorant of the existence of art, which is, of course, in our daily life, all of us. But some people, you know, I wasn't exposed to it so much in my mm -hmm. family or, and uh, I was a translator, I was a, par a parliamentary translator. Oh, I've nice. always loved language and words, but words, um, like every aspect of words, uh, the meaning, uh, the intricacies, uh, what you can compose with them. I'm not a writer, I don't, well... I don't write. <laughs> That's we'll not talk, true because we'll I've read your that. writing and it's pretty good. So you see. Okay. So uh, why? Oh, I'm, I think I'm straight from the question. Uh, the, the text and the subject, I suppose you were asking, like what? what yes. Happened. Yes. Um, because I wasn't an artist for 43 years of my life, um, I'm not going to overnight become a different person. Uh, I think I was building up uh, this kind of um, content, uh, just life experience, I guess, right. which we all have. Uh, and I saw even at art school, the younger people in my class who were like 18, 19, they had like way more talent than I could ever hope to have. And they had done this for way longer than I had. I was very new at it, but they just didn't know what to do with it. And for me, whatever talent I have, uh, I, I decided to use it to express what had been building up already. So a lot of that was about daily life. Mm -hmm. And I'm a mother of four. I do not speak about motherhood and all that because I don't think it should be of great interest other than to yourself. But uh, it impacts a person, right? And I had to do things like on a daily basis. It wasn't all about art making like I do now and all. I had to be present with my kids. So it just kind of uh, dictated. I couldn't have a studio outside, couldn't afford it. And, uh, or, or even in time, I had to be around. So that kind of dictates what you're going to do, like even in size and what you can afford and you know, all of that. So it was quite often about daily life. But as I started, I had some very early on, uh, very nice uh, exhibition opportunities. Mm -hmm. So it kind of led me to professionalize, which I had no intention to do. It was just supposed to be a break between being at home with the kids and returning to my job. But it just 
started the ball rolling and I got some offers that were interesting. So all of a sudden, the daily life that I had was life in the art world. And that was very different. So for the longest, the longest time, I went back to that subject. The art world is fascinating, not always in a good way. <laughs> and uh, it's puzzling for sure. Yes. And it's something that some artists need to share. We need to talk about that. And some outsiders need to know because they don't, or they'd be curious to know, except they just don't know. The idea of what an artist does all day is very unclear in the mind of most people. So a lot of my work is centered around that. And uh, this is the exception for me, but we can get back to that. We'll, um, we'll definitely, <laughs> everyone's super curious about what's, all, what's on the floor and what's going, what has she been doing? Yeah. This, this friend was, um, when uh, Michelle applied for the residency, she was going to do one book. And how many have you done, Michelle? 14. 14. <laughs> 14 books. Yes. So uh, uh -huh. isolation has, has kept uh, Michelle busy, that's for sure. Um, would, you, would you recommend to aspiring artists that they wait? Do you think that is a great advantage? I don't know that. I think that's probably like a, an individual thing because okay. they, they would build with that, which I didn't have. Uh, it's a different approach. I, I don't know. My own course is so uh, like custom made that I, I would struggle to give other people advice. This suited me. And uh, I don't think that I would have done well if I started early. I was... Uh, way too shy, zero self-confidence, uh, and just even at the age I started, like in art school, I would be, I didn't know what I was doing, right? And then I would be at my easel, let's say, in painting, and the teacher was coming, and I'm like late 30s, early 40s, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I, you know, how do you conquer that? I'm, I'm not sure. It still surfaces even as I'm showing the work now. Okay. But not as I'm doing the work. This, oh, uh, only when you're showing it. Yes. Okay. And, and these are things I'm telling you about me that I feel I'm observing like from the outside. Because none of it is deliberate. Most of it I can't understand. But uh, it is, uh, I, I just go, like, obviously, I've, I've made a lot of work while I was here. And when I was in the intimacy of just me and the work, uh, it's like 100%. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really going for it. There are no limits. And I will redo something like 15 times if needed. It mm -hmm. just has to be not perfect, but to my, to my satisfaction. But the second I think of questions like, what am I going to do with this? Like, where am I going to show this? It's not a very practical form. How am I going to, or, or how does this fit in with the rest of the art world such as it, as it is today? Then I lose all my needs. It's like a zero confidence again. And, uh, and I don't know, uh, and I'm pretty sure that I'm saying this and some other artists will relate to that. Yes, uh, it's a very institutionalized art world that we are operating in uh, these days, and uh, I, I find that artists are not getting their fair share, and uh, that's uh, that it will be the subject of some upcoming projects, uh, I think, and it has been in the past as well. But just not to complain, but to put the finger on something that can easily be missed. Mm -hmm. uh, the artist is uh, the art world is not led by artists, so art is not being defined by artists, and I don't think that's right. I'm I'm not like uh, ready to accept that. Sorry, that was the militant part of my. <laughs> no, no, that's great. That's that's what people want to hear. They want they want to hear your thoughts on 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 what it's really like and what you've been doing and and how you see it. Like you said, outside yourself. Um, I find that extremely interesting. And you, you don't, to the best of my knowledge, you don't sell your work, do you? No. Some of the work uh, gets sold. Uh, for a while, I was with a, a private gallery in Ottawa, uh, and it was like the best arrangement. It was a wonderful place. 
uh, but this person was too much into the art and not enough in the business. So in the end, he had to uh, fold. Um, other than that, I'm not particularly interested. I would be intimidated by that. Like you need to think uh, of you know what people might buy, or I I wouldn't know how to approach that. And uh, I'm coming from a budget of zero, uh, being a stay-at-home mom for 12 years. Mm -hmm. So we've made do. And then uh, you make compromises. I couldn't go rent a studio. I can't afford all the materials or things like that. But I, I don't, uh, you know, I can still just go and express what I want to. Uh, so sometimes the work uh, in the exhibitions, because I show in public galleries, and you do get paid for that. Uh, you, you get paid and you get uh, you also can get uh, grant like project grants to do the right. work so so long as it doesn't cost me <laughs> to do my my work I'm, I'm happy with that um but uh sometimes the institutions will purchase because it's not eminently sellable work what i do it's in bits and pieces and there are aspects of it if i stress that i know that would be sellable or commission work. I don't know how to approach commission work. Mm -hmm. I always fear that they like what I did, so that's why they're asking me. But the work that I would do for them, they go, "Oh, I like what you did before." But this, you know, I I don't think I'd be comfortable with that. It's it's definitely not for everyone. That's for sure. No, I and I quite admire the the people who can, who can do that, who can navigate that that aspect of it. Uh, because uh, I shy away from it. And, and it's not easy. It's not easy. I see people having to mount or frame or like uh, I don't know, 30 works in the hope of maybe selling one. Or, uh, and I totally respect that. And uh, I just don't know how, you know, I think I'd go do something else instead. I'm not sure I could. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a very honest response. I like that. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about the work that you you've done here on Gabriola, like where what your vision was when you applied and then how it's changed since you've been here? Okay. Um, as I've mentioned before, when I start uh, with a project uh, in my head and I have many concurrent ones on which I will take notes for years. And this was one of them. And uh, it stems from hmm. I'm 63 years old and I feel the same person. And it's not about looks or performance or things like that so much as people might think, but I'm the same person except better <laughs> than I was before. And people don't seem able to spot that so much. I, I don't mean in me personally, but I found that since I've been like 50 didn't make People make a big deal at 50. I saw no difference. In 60s, people treat you differently and talk to you different, not mean or like disrespectful necessarily. I mean, sometimes to the extremes, but what is that difference? Because it's not in here. So it must be coming from you. So there must be things that you don't know. And uh, I don't uh, take for granted that uh, the, the public is idiotic. It's like, oh, they're so dumb, they won't understand. No, no, it's because sometimes you don't try enough mm -hmm. because I am that public when I'm not making my own art. I go see everything and I'm not a dumb person. So I don't know why I would assume if they don't understand it because they're stupid, right? So I'm thinking maybe this needs to be talked about because I don't feel it is. And it's very, very ironic that in a society where we almost like exaggerate in terms of uh, every identity and uh, the whole range within every identity. And I think we're limiting the definition of, of people, individuality and all. But I think there's a positive side as well to that, saying that it's all good. So I'm like 200% behind that and I will support any of that. Uh, I, although I do see some failings of it, right? But we are neglecting one huge category and that category is not the other, it's you faster than you think. And then this othering of, of older people 
And this lumping of older people in one category, to me, and I even included it in one of the books, it brings us back to, oh, they all look alike to me. You know, that we used to say about black people or, you know, things like that. So we've grown out of that, thankfully. <laughs> and it was like really a bad reflection on you to say something like this. But I see it happen at the other end and it puzzles me. I don't understand why. Because I feel the people that I meet and the people that I've known for a long time or my age and older, they've got so much, it's so, so much more stimulating, uh, you know, discussions and things like that. So what can we do? And then art is a way to, to kind of point out sometimes uh, different uh, opinions. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just about uh, the beauty. No. Uh, and then, uh, and that's, that's relative also, uh, because if you look uh, like what's the mess that's in front of us right now as we're talking, um, to me doesn't represent the project, unfortunately, because it's very much in detail. Uh, but there is a certain uh, beauty for me to that, uh, in, in the same way that I appreciate Dada or as beautiful, there's, there's some attraction. So that aspect for me is, is still a very important part to articulate it against something, uh, around something that is visually engaging and that will uh, bring you to look at this and after that maybe ponder what, what it's saying. So I thought if I want to express these things, I do not want to offend anybody saying, well, can't you, you know, don't you realize this? And I don't want to preach. There's already way too much preachy art and I don't respond well to it myself. So I try very hard to not fall into those trappings. And if I'm going to promote that we are all people and we're all the same, I don't want to start like, oh, the young people are saying this or that. So it needs to be very inclusive. Mm -hmm. And I found that it needed to be very conversational because I am not a gerontologist or something like that. Uh, I'm just a person who has noticed things. Uh, of course, I back this with like a lot of research. Indeed. That comes from my previous uh, profession. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of research is done for the very little that appears at the end. Um, but, uh, and the sources are varied. So some of them, and it's not all positive. Uh, one of the book, uh, I think it's in there somewhere, it says this joke is about how age is uh, depicted on late night TV, like through comedy. And it's all centered about uh, around one joke that I fake analyze in a kind of academic way. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, of course, I'm hoping to bring the viewer into the joke. It's, it's, not, it's never at your expense or it's never denigrating anybody that said anything negative. It's just saying, you know, this is a bit weird and we should really talk about it. And uh, so to make it, uh, there's a lot of humor through this, to make it light, but I don't think that humor and lightness uh, are like uh, op uh, opposing the seriousness of the subject matter. You're just like, um, it's an even conversation. Mm -hmm. I'll say something like really potent and then I'll back it up with a little joke just to say that we're, you know, I'm not attacking you here. I'm just pointing out things that I've noticed and that a lot of other people have noticed. Mm -hmm. And we don't really talk about it. I just thought it was a very, very important subject. And I must say that I was very grateful that you recognize that here and that you welcome this project because I did not know uh, where I should. Uh, it's, it was my first attempt at, at presenting this idea. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and I didn't know where to direct it, where it would get the proper respect as valid, uh, because it may not be one of the current topics of, of choice and uh, that there's a lot that is imposed. And the way that I work, uh, what I did not say is that the artist books are my favorite um, way of expression when I go on residency. Okay. Because as you can see, you know, probably it's the tip of the iceberg. All these things open up and, and they're huge. And 
this would more than fill a, a, a large size gallery. Oh, right? absolutely. Some of them are 20 feet long. Yes. And then, uh, but the thing is that they would travel in a small box and it's not very heavy either. Uh, so for residencies, I have to come here, I have to go back and, you know, I don't necessarily have budget for shipping and things. Of course. And yeah. it wouldn't be practical to do, uh, normally I work in installations. So I found that this was a very uh, interesting uh, way to, to approach uh, the, the whole subject, actually, contained in a, in a box. I always think back on the Marcel Duchamp once did this piece that was uh, La Boite en Valley. And it was like a small case and it contained his entire, uh, a kind of retrospective of his greatest hits that he had redone in miniature form. Oh, wow. So I kind of see this in the same way. It's a whole world contained in pages, mm -hmm. right? And it, it does take a long time to take it in if you want to take in the whole, uh, the whole thing. But I found, uh, do you remember when I came and I, I had a look at the space after my quarantine is the first place I went and then uh, uh, it is a smallish place, but I yes. was quite, but it's nice. The light is nice. It is, so I felt oh, it's a beautiful space. Yes, I, I loved it. But then the I thought, the heritage center. <laughs> yes, <laughs> plug. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought like the, the one that is on top nearest us, is only the intro and it's actually 25 feet long. And I'm thinking, okay, that's the intro. What am I, because at the time we were still talking about having an exhibition. Of course, I don't do a body of work like this just for the one exhibition here, but still, I mean, this is going to be the first, uh, in theory, the first showing of it. So mm -hmm. make it like interesting. It was never gonna work. And it actually forced me to separate um, the work in, let's say, episodes, and that made the work so much better. I didn't think there would be 14 at first, but I think, you know, those little accidents, if you can uh, mm -hmm. run with them, run with it, sure. it really, really improved how I was seeing this uh, in many ways. Firstly, I, I closed the intro, that book is done, then nothing forces me to do to use the same aesthetic the same size the same material or anything for the one after that the one after that everyone can have its own uh, personality that suits the the topic we can talk after how i broke this down so they're all like distinct works and they're all and i i can also add to it to me this is a complete work Mm -hmm. but something may come and if I had like a book from start to finish that would be it right? right but here I can insert whatever I want through this uh, and carry on if, if needed if the situation changes if you know I get other points of view or something so to me that was a blessing I'm grateful for that as well I just want to pick up on something you said you said episodes yeah. So could you ever see this being translated into video? No. <laughs> um, maybe a videographer would say otherwise and convince me that this would be a satisfactory way. Uh, number one, and I think most artists here, unless you work in video, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is one of my favorites. I don't do it, I've only ever done one, but uh, as a viewer, I've, some of my favorite work ever were video works, mm -hmm. so uh, I totally respect that. Uh, but for me, the materiality, because you're saying, you're seeing images here. Ah, oh, that's another long topic, <laughs> but um, I am not a drawer. I don't think I have drawing skills or anything. For some reason, I felt that this uh, was needed. And in order to um, convince myself to do it and that this was a, a reasonable way to express it and that uh, the level of it was enough to justify this, this work, I started doing the drawings, but cutting them out and layering them. 
Yeah. And the materials that I found, like through this, there's a translucent uh, uh, mylar, there's newsprint that will yellow and age as we go. And that's right. planned, that's part of the work. There's shiny vinyl, uh, there's uh, a lot of pages from magazines who have, uh, they all have a different texture. Uh, you're missing out if you're seeing this on video. You're seeing more like... Oh, that's not what I meant. I meant oh. because they're epi each book is an episode to yeah. actually make a dramatic, big, like a video with people acting, oh, acting out what you're, you're talking about here. Ah, yes. This would take somebody with a different set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> it would be maybe a collaboration. Yeah. Uh, because I don't think I would know how to approach that. But that's an interesting idea, actually. Um, yes. I am not sure, uh, you took me by surprise with this question, which is good, <laughs> stimulating, uh, because uh, I have to consider that this completely suits um, this format and, and these uh, materials, uh, the tone that I want to, uh, so transferring that to a video project, uh, certainly the, the content, Mm -hmm. is, is there mm -hmm. and uh, I would certainly would like to see that addressed more I mean this is to me okay it is 14 books but I still see this as just like a launch of a conversation just little hints of because uh, we could be sitting here having this conversation and four hours about any one of those 14 aspects right. of, of what I wanted to say about this and if you look through my computer files, I think you would see that I haven't touched 10% of all the notes that I had with the research that I had made. In fact, this morning I looked at the iPad and I found two entire files, like huge files of things that I had completely forgotten, forgotten about. And I'm reading through that and oh, there's such good material. But well, you have another four days. So <laughs> okay. I mean, you, could, you could whip up some more books, right? Yeah, I'm running out of material. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's great. Um, I think maybe we should try and get some close up shots. Um, we don't have a super sophisticated setup, but Tim can uh, pick up the camera and give you some close up shots of the books. And then maybe uh, Michelle will uh, grab one and. Uh, walk you through it a little bit. Okay, so I am not getting this image, so I will trust that you're oh, doing it's, like it. Okay. It's great, yeah, uh, it's And great. I, I wouldn't comment on anything, anything specific, more like the whole series. So what you're looking at, uh, they're actually, like I did not have book board or things like that. So uh, the covers are made of uh, books from nesters, uh, boxes from nesters, right? And they're all dressed in t-shirts from uh, gyro for a while, then they closed and the, the gate shut. So they're all dressed in t-shirts. Uh, and then they each have, yeah, I'm seeing now, uh, this one, I was running out of vinyl, so I dared myself to do it in, entirely in graphite. <laughs> and I'm quite happy at how it turned out. You're, you just saw one that is, uh, uh, Ilsa brought me a, a very generous offering of, uh, old books and magazines. Elsa Bluther. And then uh, she brought this in a bag. Uh, you see the beige thing, uh, which was uh, from a shoe shop on the island and uh, the other island. I mean. And uh, I decided to use that as, as the book cover. Uh, it just, it makes it, I think anyway, human. Yes. It, it's not some extraordinary uh, work of art that uh, people, I mean, it's, it's just like basic material. And Tim, get a shot of all <laughs> the negatives hanging from the bookshelf. These are where all the letters came from that uh, Michelle added to her books. And I just thought this was stunning how she's displayed it on the bookshelf. Uh, the, the intention there, and I, actually that's a small fragment of the, <laughs> the text, uh, the rest was in the bin because I thought I can only say so much, but um, after the 14 books, I would like to make some freestanding uh, pieces that would be uh, called, oh, it brings me back to the title, we should address that. Okay, yeah. Um, so it would be called This Summary. And uh, it's, 
is done in jest a bit because uh, it's made for all the remnant or the negative space or the cutoffs or the failed attempts or anything uh, that I gathered. I kept everything, right? And that's one thing that I find the public doesn't know, like how many uh, you throw away before they're happy with the one that they're going to, to see, right? Uh, so these little elements of process, I'm quite happy to, to show, like there's uh, limitations to what I do. And I decide to highlight that because it's, it's human and it's, uh, it's another level of connecting with the people who are looking at that. Uh, that is why I, a lot of my work was done in textile and embroidery, because mm -hmm. I felt that's such a non-threatening, it's something that could be on clothes, on, on your nighty or something, and you're intimate with it, and it's not, you don't treat it as something that is higher than you. So if I can weave a conversation through something like that, uh, it's instant recognition. People are comfortable. It, it, it's almost, uh, well, I've often seen it as like a, the equivalent of a comfort blanket mm -hmm. that I'm offering. Mm -hmm. So because all the topics that I address uh, are about like, this is what our life is like. There's bound to be a person there that connects with that part of it, another person there that connects with the other part of it. But I want to be on the level. I don't want to be, you know, my work is not on plinth and my person should not be on the pedestal. It's just like, I found this language. By the way, it's the same for me. Like uh, as a translator, I work with languages. So I express, and I, you don't translate words if you're a good translator anyway. You translate the ideas and the concepts. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So. I'm doing the same here. I just discovered when I went to Italy, I learned Italian. So I had another tool for thought and for expression and communication. So when I went to art school, uh, I learned this particular language, which I've made my own. It's more malleable than other languages. Uh, but uh, it's kind of like what a poet does. Uh, to be a poet, you really need to master the language so then you can go and destroy it. And yes. make it your own, yes. uh, which is a skill that I quite uh, admire. But there's something of that I find in the visual arts as well. And uh, yeah, I, I use that. Uh, I should go back before I forget to the title. Yes, uh, the title. So the title of the whole uh, work, by the way, I see this as one work, right? Yes. It's not, uh, so even though it's compartmented and all, it's, it's a finished one piece. Uh, if this were like a painting, it wouldn't be a painting exhibition, it would be one painting. That's how I, I consider it. Okay. So it's called More Than This. And uh, oddly enough, I had another title. <laughs> and you never know when it's in another language, if you, if you master it or something. I had kind of made up a word that was this numbering. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, like, uh, because I did, uh, what I'm talking about is being treated as a number, basically. Right. Uh, and uh, Your age. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I used to be a person, now I'm a number. Right. right? To me, it, it, it was a callback or a throwback to this uh, cult series that I had in my youth because we had it up in French, which was The Prisoner. I don't know if some people might remember that. But he, he said, I'm not a number. He lives on an island where they, they don't address them by names or anything. He's an ex uh, secret agent. And he was forced to go there. And they call him number six. And he just like uh, rebels against that. And uh, like, I'm a human being. Well, mm -hmm. that's what I want to claim for this situation. So it was this numbering, Nina. And the person who wrote my recommendation to come here says, I can't let you use that title because it's too much like dismembering. <laughs> <laughs> I did not agree, but I couldn't unhear it. <laughs> so I thought, yeah. And then uh, for the life of me, I cannot remember uh, how I got to more than this, but I know what it means for me. It's like, uh, there's so much more, let's say me, because you know, I'm, right. I'm the one who initiated this, in me that you seem to care to find out. And I, I don't, I'm getting back to why I'm doing this. So 
each of these, and I don't know if there's some, yes, we see this girl or what do I have next to me? Um, so more than this is on the, uh, the cover of every one of the books. And uh, the binding is not finalized, which is what uh, this will go, it'll be glued and it will, it will look like a book. So this one is this round. Uh, one is this joke, this project, this uh, this word, uh, which is the word still. So you're still skiing, you're still active, you're still this. And then uh, the conclusion to the still book is there's nothing still about Nina. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like a person carrying on, uh, you know, their their activities. But there are words like that that I find really because it it brings you down again to the idea of a pattern mm -hmm. and you're not a pattern any more than you're a number you're a person so that struck me when you brought that up the other day when i was here and um you showed me the still uh series and i went home and i was really struck by how i would say that that it is just part of my language, part of how I communicate that I would say, oh, you're still doing that and not think anything of it, that it was it negative in any way. Yes, yes, yes. So we need to read, we need well, to Well, you're the touching language. on something really important that I neglected to say. I am guilty of a lot of what's in there. I'm not, uh, I'm not above that. And then we need to think about it. One of the, uh, it's this opinion. Uh, it speaks of that, of how this um, imagined uh, uh, character, Nina, is, is the only older person in the book. I can explain why the characters are very few, uh, but I can leave that after. Um, she is most infuriated, not by how young people treat her, but how her peers, it's always about, hey, you know, we're not as young as we used to be. Yeah. That's it. But I, if you if you go to a meeting of old friends you've not seen like in a long time, and and you know there's a lot inside them, yeah. and you just want to pick up where you left off. But now you need to talk about you know the elements or things like and and just uh, this character I made it for pet peeve. So it's not what the millennials will will say. It's it's really what their peers uh, are actually buying into this attitude. So in the last episode where she uh, insists on saying what she learned through this conversation, uh, she says uh, she learned that we should be more proactive about, you know, saying things. Because another thing about aging, I find anyway, is that you don't feel you have to express your opinion all the time. Mm -hmm. So you tend to kind of take it in your stride and you carry on. But for some aspects, maybe that's not the best uh, attitude because it confirms you know by by not opposing or yeah and then the characters uh because the com okay it's uh, they each serve a purpose there's about four or five uh characters and uh, uh, the first one is uh the is nina's grandson and that would be me it's not me as a grandmother but it's me as a granddaughter and my grandma was my best friend and for the life of me i could never have talked of her in terms of age mm -hmm. or you know she she was just she gave me so much love of cinema love of reading happiness uh, uh, feeling deserving of love and all of that uh, i got to her and uh, I still miss her dearly. So this person sees uh, his grandma in a certain way, sees as a person. So he is in charge of putting these aspects to it. And then he has a friend, Noah, who uh, doesn't think, and he's like a neat guy and all, but he doesn't think of those things. It's mm -hmm. like they meet at the punk show. And isn't she a bit old to be at the punk show? And it's something normal that uh, it's actually something that was said about me. <laughs> and then uh, um, a friend as well who was in a punk band when she was uh, younger and somebody enthusiastically said, oh, you went to a punk show, that's really cool. But you know he's saying that it's because of her age, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise you go to a punk show, you go to another show, right? 
And uh, I just think, you know, why just erase that barrier? So he is in charge of the naive things that we say, including me, without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Things like, uh, what does she, like, are you going to say what you do? Like, if I meet you and I might ask what you do for a living, mm -hmm. and we have this odd notion, what we do for a living means how we earn money. Yes. Again, that's another topic, but I find that very <laughs> strange. And that would be fun. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, but maybe another project some other day. <laughs> well, um, but uh, you can reply to that question. And uh, but uh, are they going to ask? Like he struggles to ask, what did she do? And what? And in fact, she's a writer. So the grandson says it's not a profession re you retire from. <laughs> Actually, it just gets better. Uh, so, so he's in charge of proposing these little kind of uh, maladroit, like a gauche uh, comments, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and in the end, he, he sees that you know that barrier is fake, right? And and they kind of reflect on on that. But uh, I wanted them to reflect on what they had learned from this conversation on both sides, uh, like I do not take kindly to those comments about millennials or about you know any group of person mm -hmm. we're doing exactly the same mm -hmm. so i want out from all of us that's it <laughs> <laughs> excellent i'm going to ask uh the viewers if anybody has any questions for Michelle, or if there is a book that you would like us to hold up to the camera um, anything at all, please don't be shy. I did have one question. Um, someone was curious, Narissa was curious about the Ottawa gallery, um, which one it was that you spoke of. That was, I believe uh, it was too into art. Uh, it was Dale Smith gallery. Dale Smith gallery? Yes. Okay, yes. Dale Smith Private gallery. gallery. Yeah, yeah, that was fantastic. It was a very rewarding uh, experience. Because uh, this is a private gallery, like private gallery, of course, you mean commercial gallery, right? Mm -hmm. That would never, never influence, like, uh, you know, sometimes, like, I'd do a show there and she would say, oh, I could have sold this one 42 times over, <laughs> but she would never pressure me to do more like that. Or right. she, she knew that even for her, I would do, like, a whole body of work. And some of them would find their way through, uh, but it was mostly art institution people that, uh, that got them. Uh, but uh, yes, there are some good ones out there. That's one thing that drives me nuts about uh, some gallery directors is how they speak to artists and say, yes, do more like that. Or yes. you should do more, more with houses, put little houses in your paintings, they'll sell yeah. better. It's like, yeah. well, that's not the point. More, <laughs> more blue, more blue. <laughs> yeah, more blue, yeah. more blue. Yeah, I, I did a whole work about that, you know, but we don't have time to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, everybody's being really shy. Nobody has any, um, any comments or any questions for you. So, is there anything else you'd like to say about uh, the work that you've completed here, or your time on Gabriola, what you're doing next? Uh, hmm. Okay. That was three things. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I don't know which to pick. Let's say, because artists are always excited about what they're doing next, because <laughs> this is in my past form, oh, yeah, although it's not that. like I'm still uh, editing it, and I was making some corrections this morning, but uh, when I'm uh, going back home, I am going back to a comment about artists in, in the art world. And uh, that's, again, something that was after this, let's say, in my train of thoughts, but has been simmering for many years. So it, it's a, a, a show called uh, Everything You Might Have Wanted to Know About Art But Didn't Think What. Oh. So, of course, mimicking the Woody Allen, but yes. it's, it's not, it's not uh, you wanted to know because art is not deemed essential, uh, although in some ways it is. And it's not, uh, we're afraid to ask. It's more like you didn't think, because this is, I'm addressing the part of art making uh, and the part of artists' lives uh, that uh, people just don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have, they have like really no idea. And uh, this is a part that uh, regardless of what kind of art we make or when we meet with other artists, this is usually what we talk about. 
So I thought, well, it, it you know, deserves a little airing out. Uh, and so it's going to be made uh, again over three years. I collected quotes from artists, known ones, uh, they will be anonymous anyway, mm -hmm. uh, uh, neighborhood artists, uh, whatever, like that I could come across uh, on YouTube at the uh, openings or whatever. I would write down things that I found, uh, n not that I found like brilliant or something, but to the point and mm -hmm. sometimes quite opposite to my own views. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of everything in there and they're going to be made a more or less collage like this, but um, so the gallery will be just plastered, ceiling to or floor to ceiling, uh, with posters, and it will have quotes from artists speaking, not through a curator, uh, just like of their passion of what they do and how they want to do it, and how mainly they want to speak through the art, not through you know, whatever else is built up on, on top of that, mm -hmm. which can add, it can be a symbiotic relationship, but these days it's less and less. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that, but because, and that's odd because I'm not on social media, as you know, yes. <laughs> but this is the way. And uh, I decided so that people don't feel out of place or that uh, they would be given when entering the gallery, a little strip of stickers and then smiley face and everything. Emoticons. That you, uh, I, yes, some, yeah. like the basic ones, the yeah. heart and the thumbs up, thumbs down. The, yeah. the ones that you have, the basic ones on yes. Facebook, right? Um, see, I'm still knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I spy on it sometimes. But, yeah. uh, so that they apply directly on the work. Because people are so used to expressing their thoughts about like everything, like it's work. And, and again, another topic for another project, but uh, just like after that, the remnants of this exhibition will actually show people's concerns. Uh, it's going to be in um, an artist run center. So okay. the public is heavily artists and art related people right. uh, and other people as well. But uh, so you will see where the love is and you will see what's annoying them and you will see what they relate to. So it's kind of participatory. Yeah. In the, or where the, the distinct differences are. There's lots of thumbs up and thumbs Absolutely. down on the same piece. Yes. Yeah. Plus it is a comment on what an artwork is. Is it like, because these posters are not printed posters. They're handmade and they're one-offs. So is it a work of art? Or is it just like a flyer you see, uh, you know, pasted on, on a wall on the street? Uh, that's something that's always uh, interested me, the difference between product and, and artwork. Mm -hmm. So in theory, you go in a gallery, you can't even come too near, you certainly can't touch, let alone place stickers right on top of, of the artwork. So I find that a, an interesting uh, dynamic. That sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. We have some questions. We do. So let's see if I can read this without my reading glasses on. Um, appreciating the discussion. Uh, agree with the ageism. Please do walk us through one of the books that make up this piece. So um, we can choose a book or you can choose, I mean, you can choose a book and then I can hold it up or we can hold it up together. Uh, okay. Because it's a little bit challenging. Yes. Um, and I don't even know what to pick. Uh, what did I have here? Something. Oh, yes. Oh, probably bad choice because it's white on white, but this is my favorite. Uh, this, not the good. Maybe we can peek at a couple. Okay, sure, for sure. I'm very, yeah, let's do that. And then, uh, yeah. okay. semi randomly. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tim's going to come walk forward so we can see it. Do you want me to hold one edge of it? Uh, or do you want to go through page by page? Uh, no, 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 no. I can't do all the pages. It, it'll take forever. But uh, as I've said, uh, they're not bound yet, right? Right. So the bonding is there, uh, but it needs to be finalized. So we can stretch it out. Okay, that's great. If you like this one, I can't resist. If you want to get a part of it. But this uh, doesn't do well for... Every book you open of more than this has a subtitle, so this image. And of course, there's only one way of judging an older person as older, 
is how they look. Otherwise, it's not something you can keep inside or it's not the... So this one speaks more of how this is an imposition much more on women, uh, the way they're expected to look and the way that uh, there's this uh, kind of uh, race to or competition to look younger. And it, it, um, it explains in this, in this uh, let's say, episode, uh, why we don't want that? Why, why should we want to uh, uh, actually be the same person that we were before, where we know that in here we've progressed, right? And then uh, just like all the efforts that are made into altering appearances so that we think we look like what we looked before and you never do, to me, there's no, no more pathetic than a woman who's done like a lot of plastic surgery. You don't look younger, you just look like you're trying too hard. Yeah. Right? So uh, this is uh, something, it, it explains, and it, there's a lot of facts. I, I started with the characters. I get really passionate about this project, so it's difficult to stick to one aspect of it. But one of the characters is actually her granddaughter, and she's a social scientist. Mm -hmm. So when I had the drier information that I got through academic papers and things like that about aging, uh, I give it to her. She's the one who has the excuse to say more in depth, to explain that, to have more text than just a speech bubble, which you can skip if you don't like reading so much, but it's important. and. Uh, Everybody after that will say, oh, come on, give it a rest. And then we're back to the conversational tone. But she serves that, uh, that purpose. And uh, anyway, she, she explains more. Uh, I think I probably made a bad choice. I just wanted to, uh, OK, I'll show you this one, Tim. This one is called This Interview. And it's one of the late um, episodes let's say, in the story. Uh, they're all lined, by the way, by a, a king-sized sheet that I found at Gyro. <laughs> so this is a, a repeat pattern. Um, the interview was a gimmick, mm -hmm. I will admit, uh, to include, because I was getting toward the end, and I'm thinking, oh, I haven't included this or that or that, and it's very important, very interesting. So I made it in the form of an interview. There is an interviewer some will recognize as Twiggy <laughs> and a model, fashion model in the mm -hmm. 60s. And uh, she uh, asked questions uh, like you're asking me, like we did, we went from this to that. And, you know, so uh, I could include like a lot more. And I always like, this is more about materials, but we're looking at the negative space. This is card or kind of uh, card stock. Uh, it's actually quite nice to the touch. And I like the negative space, so I make this as an excuse. Uh, you'll see it floats on top of the page. So when you're reading it, there are shadows and there are... So it's very dry text. It was also an excuse to um, insert like as much text as I could, but still make it visually... Uh, th there's little glass beads. I mean, these are the details that you wouldn't see on video or on Zoom. Um, but uh, anyway, it explains like a lot of the things that were left unsaid. Uh, big parts of this were from an interview with Margaret Atwood. And that's another thing that I've noticed. If you have an article, it will always, about the person who's older, it will always, always start by stating their age. It's, she's no longer Margaret Atwood, she's like, 80 year old Margaret Atwood. Exactly. So that is so limiting. <laughs> so do you, in your research, have you come across where that comes from? Like, when did we start doing that? I'm not so sure. It is different. Like, yeah, that's a conclusion. And that's is it a, the same in Europe? Is it the same? No, it's, uh, it's North America. But it's getting the same in Europe. Okay. And we also always admire how Asian people uh, treat, the, or, or indigenous people uh, treat their elders with greater respect. Absolutely. Yes, but we don't follow it. If we admire it, let's apply it to us as well, right? Uh, so anyway, that's kind of like part of the message. It varies, 
but uh, global world has become like one large big, uh, uh, with, with singular exceptions. Mm -hmm. I see a difference uh, in Italy. The first time I went to live there was like 12 years ago. And uh, that was amazing. Like the inclusive, uh, inclusiveness of that society was striking mm -hmm. and it still is. But it has changed. Yeah. So uh, I, I deplore that because they, they were on to a good thing and we should uh, stick to it. We should blame it on YouTube. Uh, I think that's totally ruined the world. <laughs> um, okay, I have, a, I have some more questions for you. Um, I want to ask about the mosaic piece on Michelle's website called Curtain Time. Oh my uh, God, how long did it take? <laughs> did she have help? It is amazing. But the logistics of creating it are boggling. Yes, uh, that is a good, uh, a good question because uh, it's interesting that somebody would single out that piece. It's a one-off. It's my only public art uh, piece that I did or that I applied for because I don't feel it's my thing. And what you're saying is so pertinent because I don't know, I can't see the people or I don't know. M. Uh, Rutabaga. I don't know. Uh, so uh, obviously an artist, <laughs> but um, this is so contrary. And that's why I haven't pursued that uh, public art because a piece like that, uh, it's funny when I think of dimensions, large scale, I still think in feet, it may not say anything to someone, but it's 50 feet long and it's on two floors. And it is part of uh, integration of art to architecture. Wow. A program in Ontario mm -hmm. and uh, they have to give like 1% of the budget. So in this case, it was an, an existing theater, a center point theater in Ottawa, and they were doing a ex uh, considerable extension of it. So they had to commission like a, a public art piece. And I did this in collaboration with a friend, like she really pushed me to, to do this. She wanted to do public art mm -hmm. and uh, and she didn't know, you know, what topic, how to, uh, and, and I had never done it, but the two of us, it worked like beautifully. But what, what I deplore, uh, I like, I'm a hands-on person. I enjoy, and we didn't speak much about, we spoke mo more about uh, the topic, which to me is the most important, it's the driving force, mm -hmm. but equal time is devoted to the making. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, is my, I don't mind that some artists have their works like done by other you know, people or to me, it's still their work. I don't have a problem with that, but I feel I would be depriving myself of the best part if I sent it. Like when I was doing all the stitching, it's incredible the amount of time that goes in there. Like these projects will last like two years, three years just to do the one body of work. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, why don't you commission it out? Why would I deprive myself? So in the case of that, it, it's huge. It's positively huge. Photos don't give you the scale, right? But you can't touch it because the, you, you're there in a the hard hat and then steel cap uh, boots mm -hmm. and you direct. <laughs> I don't oh, that must have been so hard. Yes, because I have done a body of work, which were, was with ceramic tiles, where, which is why I, I suggested we, we try this. Well, we have to send it to New York or to, uh, to a firm which would digitize it and make like a mapping of all the letters and everything. And then they sent it back. And then you deal with customs and you deal with this and that. And none of it is, is to my liking, right? <laughs> And then, but we did it, it worked well. Yeah. And then the, these box, uh, they make a grid, they're all numbered and all. And then uh, there's four uh, workers that are there and they ask for your directions and you they do that. And I have done that before, like the tiling and, and I can do it neatly and all, which you can't because of insurance and yeah. because of laws, regulations, yeah. unions and whatnot. So it is, I'm really pleased with that, it's actually two floors in the theater. So the top floor in big letters say shh because the show's about to start. And the other uh, floor is comments. It's like a little adventure in a multi-language form uh, about what people regularly say when they're going to the theater. So the two people meet, it's like a, 
you know, it's already on the way, and then that, all this work, and the usual stuff, mm -hmm. which is a, a play in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so people relate to that nicely. But, uh, mm. Okay, uh, comment. I hope you have enjoyed your time on Gabriola. It's too bad that the pandemic kept us from having some time to meet in public spaces. Okay, so shall I address that? <laughs> <laughs> I have a wicked plan. Um, when I said that I'm going back and working on something about uh, what the artists do, really, I was just really seduced by this place. And not only the obvious, uh, you know, but the very few people that I met, and then they say, oh, you shouldn't look at, you know, sometimes I, I just look and the people don't even know it. Somebody would recommend somebody else. And I have been looking at the websites. I've been scrutinizing when you put out the, the uh, art on Gabriola site. I've been, uh, you know, I found that this island has a lot more to offer than what is perceived from the art outside. We were talking about that before. Yes. There are things that are known, like the studio tour and things like that, but there's so many other types of practices that I was surprised. To, to find that I had not heard about or, and I would very much like to explore that. So I have put in boldly a proposal. I don't know if it makes sense or not. Uh, I totally see what I would be doing with it um, to return and get what I missed. So I had everything. I had like leisure time. I had, I, it was wonderful. I, I rate this a hundred percent. And then uh, on all counts. And of course, the, the, the thing that doesn't get included in the 100% is because it's nobody's fault. It was COVID, right? Uh, thankfully, I functioned well on my own. So I wasn't like lonely or whatever, but I would have preferred to meet those people. And from the glimpses that I got, it was so stimulating to me that I would like to come back and do a project about the people, but with the people. Not that we collaborate on artwork or something. It's 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 above that actually. Um, if I could, uh, you see a little bit uh, on this image of, of how beautiful and huge this place is, obscenely so. And it's a beautiful home. Yeah, it is. It is incredible. Plus, I don't think you see the view. I mean, it is. Uh, beyond belief, uh, you know, uh, so uh, this uh, woman, Yushiko Katara, when uh, she, her intention was to give this to, to artists, so that artists would benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And I read that as not only artists coming in, firstly, we missed out, like I didn't get to see what most of the people here do, mm -hmm. and they didn't get the contact with an outside look, or, you know, me and then people who follow. Uh, so that's, uh, that, that's bad for both parties, uh, but I think that the residency itself, the house itself, should also benefit to people here, not just to the people who are imported into this, this uh, context. So my thought uh, would be, and I have many sources that I draw upon, it is too long to explain, it's very intricate, but to make this like a, an open meeting place uh, at regular intervals, so that I, because I was always also surprised to see how many of the artists here don't know other artists here, uh, because it's not like a huge population, but I found like, oh, you know, this person does this and that, and then surely this person would love that, but they just don't know each other, you know? So if what I would do through this, um, could benefit after I'm gone, like some people will have met. And by that, I include musicians and writers, poets, dancers, whatever you have here. Uh, that a lot of them are invisible and they might want to actually meet others and then I'm gone and then they carry on, right? And making this a meeting place, it's in the tradition of the salon and, you know. It's yes, a, absolutely. So a meeting of the minds and you come, let's say you come here on a Tuesday afternoon or something regularly, and then you're allowed to invite other people because I can't know who these people are, right? And we sit there, maybe some music is played, maybe some art is shown, 
maybe we don't even address the topic of art, but, uh, and from that, and I have since come up with a title, which I didn't put in the proposal, and it would be minutes, um, like uh, moments in life, mm -hmm. but minutes, like taking minutes, because my own project stemming from that, if I can get this through, uh, would be uh, to, I'm going back to textile work because I think it calls for it. And it would be a freeze, um, like so a long mm -hmm. uh, embroidered and, and quilted and all, um, that would tell not the story of, but stories of moments of talks of artists. There's text, I stitched text as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't say, oh, so-and-so said this thing, but just kind of a, like, by osmosis, mm -hmm. what, what happens when artists uh, gather. And I find that this frieze and needlework uh, was traditionally since, as far as we know, the Middle Ages uh, to uh, tell t uh, stories, stories of battle, stories of you know, creation of, of a town or because people could not read. So they had to do it through uh, this, uh, this way. So uh, anyway, there's many, many more ramifications to that, but uh, I would feel a lot better if I could uh, make others benefit from, from this, because I, I was spoiled rotten to have access to this place. <laughs> well, you produced a lot, so I, I think you paid your dues, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. And um, we have received your proposal, and um, everyone is very interested in it. So there's a meeting pending, so you should know. And uh, it will depend on what the trust wants to do with mm -hmm. the house. Uh, we do have two more artists uh, coming after you in the middle of February from Vancouver um, who will self-isolate and keep to themselves. And they'll be here for another four months. Um, but then the house needs to be open for the trust. So we'll see how it, how it goes. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that I want you to come back. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like we've just really started uh, skimming the surface of, of what's possible. I love the idea of the salon of making this more of an artist um, uh, gathering place uh, as we spoke the other day. And um, the need for this, instead of being able to have an actual exhibit has led to the idea of having regular artist talks uh, on Gabriel um, to get to know each other. We'll do it via Zoom for now and, and practice until we can we can meet in person. Um, but yeah, we'll have to talk more about this. So I have, I have a couple more people that want had comments. Um, this is such a profoundly important issue. The way you have uh, represented it is brilliant. You are so beautifully articulate. I could listen to you speak all day long and longer even. Thank you for sharing this great work. And um, Margie says, yes, I completely agree, Bridget. I was late joining. Sorry, I missed the start of this presentation. There were orcas going by. So that's always a good excuse <laughs> oh, for being is. late I to agree. a Zoom meeting. <laughs> uh, merci beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup from M. Rudebeckes. And um, uh, I think, okay, yes. And I think this is Fran. Yes, a very exciting and important artist you are, Michelle. You've certainly started that very important conversation with us here. So yes, thank you sure. for that. And we're at um, 3.18, so it's been uh, an hour and almost 20 minutes, um, which is fantastic. The time's just flown by. I love listening to you, you speak as well. I've enjoyed the times that I've been able to come and visit with you here. Did you have any um, parting words for our artists who are watching? Um, well, what, picking up from what you just said, I don't love hearing me talk all that much, <laughs> but this is what happens though. And this, this is what I would like uh, to see happen, uh, you know, like in, in that kind of a setting. So there would be less of me and more bits like from others and how can it go wrong, right? So uh, thank you for the hospitality, uh, despite, you know, the distance and, and all that. Uh, just, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I was very excited to, uh, to come here and I'm even more excited about what I got here uh, on, you know, on all fronts. So thank you very much. Excellent. So we can call this residency a success. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent.
Well, I think that's everything for this afternoon. Thank you everybody for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. Enjoy your afternoon.